Welcome to Figure Feedback, my name is Jeremy, and today I'm gonna to be talking about this printer here from Creality. It is the Creality Ender 3 V3 SE. It is a bit of a mouthful, but bear with me because the V3 series of printers belongs to a family, and this particular printer sits on the bottom of that totem pole. This is the most entry level printer that you can get from Creality right now that still has a somewhat of a modern touch. It is also low priced. It's something that you would get for yourself if you want to dip your toes into 3D printing, but you don't want to spend much money. Or if you're gonna buy this as a gift, maybe for a relative or a friend, you're thinking that they might like something like this, but you don't wanna spend that much money only to find out that they don't really care, this printer satisfies that need as well. So believe it or not, this printer came from Temu or Timu. You can use whichever name you like, but it's all the same store. And I hooked up with them and I asked them if they could send me this printer so that I can show it to you guys and save some money in the process. So this printer right here, if you get it from there, it costs a hundred in $60, which is a pretty good deal. So if you wanna save some money on that, I do have a promo code that you can use. I'm gonna throw it up on the screen. If you go to the website, make sure that you search for DPV8734, and I'll put that on the screen as well. And when you do that, you're gonna unlock a $100 coupon bundle. And if you haven't used Temu or Timu before, you can scan the QR code on the screen. It's gonna take you to the app, and then you'll be able to get this printer because you're a new user for $160. It's one of the lowest prices that I have seen for this particular printer. All right, so if you're interested, go ahead and check that out. All right, so now let's talk about this printer, starting with some specs. The build volume that you're going to get, I think is pretty suitable for a beginning level machine. 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters. Now it's certainly not the largest bed that you can get on a standard printer, but it's not necessarily small either. You'll be able to print a lot of things using this build volume. As far as the speed goes, the maximum printing speed is gonna be 250 millimeters a second, but the average speed is gonna be a little bit slower than that at 180 millimeters per second. And the acceleration is 25 millimeters per second squared. Now that is a stark contrast to what we see on a more expensive machine that can go up to about 20,000 millimeters per second square acceleration speed and some printers can get even faster than that. So don't go into it thinking that you're gonna get top of the line anything. This is just something that's going to get you started. Now, in order to get started, I wanted to think about this as a beginner. What would it be like if you didn't know hardly anything about this and you just took it out of the box? Starting with the assembly. I'm happy to say that the assembly of this printer was pretty easy. In fact, it was very easy. So the only thing that I had to do was attach this gantry to the base, which just required a few screws that you tighten from the bottom of the machine. Then you can just flip it back over. There's a couple more screws that you need to tighten up. And then you have the spool holder on top. Again, just a couple screws, tighten it down. You have the screen here, another couple of screws to tighten down. There's a ribbon on the back of the screen that you can just plug in and then you're done with that. And then you have the print head, which comes already attached, but you have this black ribbon here that you have to put down into the print head, make sure that it's nice and connected. And then there's this little plastic piece right there as well that you just put right over the bottom of the ribbon, a couple more screws, tighten it down, plug in all the various motors, just plug and play, make sure that the switch on the back for the voltage is appropriate for where you live in the world, plug it in, and then that's it. One of the great things about this printer in the year 2024, if you're just starting out, is that it does auto everything, basically. As soon as you plug it in, it's gonna run through the auto leveling function. It's gonna automatically set the Z offset as well. And as you might have noticed, there's no wheels to spin. Unlike some of the older printers, you don't have to take a piece of paper and put it under the print head and see if you get a little bit of friction and you're constantly turning wheels. There's no wheels on the bottom of this. It's gonna take care of everything by itself. Now, does it get it perfect? 
Yeah, well, it's going to kind of depend, but for me, it did a darn good job. The maximum temperature that you can get out of the hot end is gonna be 260 degrees Celsius. The bed's maximum temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. And you do get a direct drive extruder for when you want to print things like TPU, it'll make things a bit easier for you there. But you're still going to give up some more modern amenities, such as a touchscreen. This don't have a touchscreen. Instead, you have to use it like an old school Ender 3 Pro. It's got this wheel here that you can turn in order to make the selections. And then you click it in when you want to confirm that selection. You're also not going to be getting Wi-Fi. So as far as sending prints from a slicer to the printer, not going to happen. Instead, you are going to go over to the left of the machine and you're going to have to put in a full size SD card to transfer your prints over and it just clicks right in. Everything's great. So when you want to update the firmware on this printer, you're going to have to use a firmware for the screen and another firmware for the printer itself. But chances are, if you buy it now, it's gonna come with that latest firmware. And based on what I've been able to see, Creality hasn't upgraded the firmware in a while. So you won't necessarily have to worry about doing that, most likely. All right, so what is the printing process like with this guy. Well, you know, it was real simple. Just slice the file. I used Orca Slicer to slice all these files. I put it on the SD card, put it in the printer, go to the print menu. I always make sure I select the calibrate option before I start printing and then off I went. First thing that I printed was this cat pool figure. It's like Deadpool, but it's a cat. And it was print in place and it came out pretty decently. However, underneath the chin, there's a little bit of straggliness going on there because honestly, could have used some supports under the chin. So the cooling wasn't good enough to prevent that from happening, but the figure still came out looking pretty decent. You know, I'll be fine with this as a beginning level 3D printer. All right, so after I got that done, I need to print something to hold up the keys in my house. You know, something you just put on the wall and hang your keys on. And that's where this thing came in here. And it printed really smoothly. You'll be able to see it in some of the close-ups here, but also you'll see in the close-up stringing. Some pretty decent stringing ads. It was going from post to post to post. And that's one of the things about this printer is even though you start it up, you can start printing, you can get some decent looking prints out of it. It doesn't mean that everything is perfectly tuned right out of the box. So when you're starting out, I think the most important thing is to get some wins under your belt, get some prints going, get some successful prints, and then you can kind of clean up the details afterwards. So after I printed this out, I decided to do a little bit of tweaking, see what I can do to get rid of these strings. So I did a retraction calibration test with an Orca slicer, and this is how it turned out. I did my best to keep the strings intact, but basically at the end of all of this, I decided to move my retraction settings down from the standard 0.8 down to 0.6, according to the results of this test. I'll leave a link to the documentation of how you can read something like this in the description. I'm not going to go too deep into it because again, this is a beginning level 3D printer and doing all these calibrations is something that you'll do after you get started when you really want to start dialing stuff in. So I'm not going to bog things down with that. So after I did the calibration test, I printed this out just to see how the stringing turned out and it got a little bit better. It is still not perfect. It requires more tweaking, but Hey, that's just it's an aesthetic thing. You can get rid of those strings with like a hair dryer or a heat gun. So it's really just some quality of life things, but it's not a deal breaker by any means. Now, before I did the calibrations for the retraction to try to get rid of some of the stringing, I wanted to do a Hue Forge print because I'm a big fan of Hue Forge. So I decided to print this out here. And as you can see in some of this footage, when it first came out, now first of all, it looks nice, but the stringing was an issue with this. And I had to clean it up with a hot air gun just so the strings wouldn't be so pronounced. But 
it did come out with the colors and everything looking pretty decent. Now you probably noticed that this side of it is curled up. Now granted, this is pretty thin. You can just see how flimsy it is. But the reason why this curled up is because of the print bed that this printer comes with that I think should be the very first thing that you swap out if you decide to get this printer. You should just buy another plate when you buy the printer. The black plate that comes on it is smooth and the problem with it is it does too good of a job at holding on to your prints to the detriment of your prints and to the detriment of your plate. Even taking off the plate and flexing it doesn't pop the prints off. It's like glued on there and trying to peel this off ended up with me bending one of the sides. So what you should definitely do is invest in a texture PEI plate like I did here. This one is from Comgrow and this plate is going to hold on to the prints really good, but when the plate cools, the prints pop right off or slide right off. I kept some filament already on here just so that you can see how easy it is for me to peel that up. Now on that black build plate, I could not peel it up by my hand. I had to take a pair of those snips that comes with every 3D printer. I had to dig in there to pull it out. It was not fun. So definitely get yourself a texture PEI build plate when you get this printer. It'll make your life a lot easier. And when I did that, I made another Hue Forge print, this time of a Pokeball. And you can take a look at the back and take a look at that first layer. The Z offset was really good. The auto leveling was really good. And the stringing was a lot better managed with this Hue Forge print because I did the calibrations and then I printed this out and it came out looking pretty good. Now, if you're a fan of Hue Forge stuff, one thing that you should know is that even though you can put in pauses in the slicer so you can change your colors, the software that this runs, it doesn't have an option for a filament change. So it's not gonna purge the old filament and wait for you to put in the new filament and then it purges that a little bit and then it continues to print. It's just gonna pause and you'll have to take the filament out by holding down this black lever and literally pulling the filament out pushing the new filament in and just giving a little bit of pressure so you can squeeze as much of that old filament out as you can. You're gonna have to kind of keep your eye on it because when I would press resume to the print, it would bring like a little blob of filament with it and I would have to really quickly snatch it so that it didn't affect the rest of the print. So um, that's one thing you should know if you're trying to do filament changes and everything is not going to make it as efficient as it can be. You have to just kind of do things manually that way. So that's another quirk of having a machine that's good for beginners, but lacks some of the more uh, quality of life, modern amenities. Another great thing that I liked about this printer is the tolerances that it had. So here's one thing that I printed. It's like a little fidgety joystick kind of a thing. It came in a couple different parts, this part in this part, and it goes together smoothly. And then this one in the middle, this little joystick, it just flicks back and forth and then it just goes right back to the center. You can click it in and everything moves pretty good. Having good tolerances is really good because if you're printing something that requires parts that move, you don't want them to be frozen. And I'm really happy that this worked out the way that it did. And I also printed this tolerance test right here. And <laughs> let me tell you, they all move. Here's 15 is moving nice and smooth. 20 for some reason was kind of, it was kind of stuck a little bit, which is weird because 20 is supposed to be smoother than 15, but a little bit of effort. I got the 20 moving, 25 is moving good, 30 is even easier, 35 moves great. All of these move every single one. So it passed this tolerance test with no tuning from me as far as you know anything except for trying to get the retraction and stringing under control that's all i did and it still managed to pull this off without me doing anything and that is awesome so if someone were to ask me what printer i would recommend for a beginner the first thing i would ask is what's your budget followed by what are you going to be using it for and if you don't want to spend much money 
if you have a budget that is under $200 and maybe the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini is a bit too small for you, despite the fact that that printer has technology that feels like light years ahead of what this one can do, then I have no problem recommending this Ender 3 V3 SE to anyone. I think that it is good to get up and running, to get started. It is not perfect out of the box, but it gives you some wins to start. And then as you grow and learn more about how all of this stuff works, you can then start to figure out what you can do to make it even better, like for the stringing, for example. But right off the bat, you're printing things that look good, the tolerances are good, and you'll always be able to step it up to a more feature complete printer in the future. So remember, if you want to pick this up from Temu or Timu and you want to save some money so you can get it for 160 bucks, check out all that information in the description. It'll tell you exactly what you need to do to do that. And then also, apparently they've got like these local warehouses now. So when I got this, I didn't even have to wait like two or three weeks for it to be delivered from China. It was delivered locally. I think it just came from a warehouse in Georgia, not too far from where I am. So it came in just a few days. So that's also pretty great. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have this particular printer. And if you do, what do you think about it? Would you recommend it as well? And remember, it is not the best, but if all you got is 170 bucks in your pocket, and this is 160, this is going to take you the entire way even when you throw some tax in there. So let me know down in the comments what you think. And I want to thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.